16 national European teams were formed, and now it's time for them to represent their countries at one of the most exciting tournaments of the year, the European Nexus Games. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from Leicester, UK. And uh, my name is Kendrick Swish. I'll be your host tonight to guide you through all the action of day number one of the Nexus Games. And of course, I couldn't do this show all by myself, and that's why I'm being joined by some of the finest gentlemen the European Heroes of the Storm scene has to offer. To my left, HCC China and European Open Division veteran Tetcher, and to my far left, we're being joined by none other than five-time European champion and former team captain of Team Dignitas Bakery. Glad to have you on board, guys. I am very happy to be here, yeah. Um, I'm very excited to see what I can bring to this broadcast. As a we, dude, it is a pleasure <laughs> to have you with us for the first time. First time on a stage from, the first time on this side of the desk outside of winner's interviews. Uh, and it's all, and, <laughs> and to just add on top of it, it's in a building that you won a European Championship in. There's just so many levels of nostalgia here. And we chose the exact right tournament for you to introduce you as our analyst and, of course, um, expert on the desk. Because the Nexus Games is not just any tournament. The Nexus Games is all about showing national pride to really make the fans in every European individual country happy. And, of course, to also, you know, maybe introduce some new names, some new faces to the scene, or to see old familiar ones once again. Absolutely. I recognize a couple of these players from the Open Division, where yep. we've cast a couple, and we recognize, uh, Becky recognizes a couple from Hero League, for example. But there are a couple of these names that we have never seen before. And we are really excited to learn how good these players are, the potential future of Heroes Esports with you. Yeah, absolutely. And let's get straight to Nitty Gritty, guys, and take a look at the groups we have prepared for the first European Nexus game. Group A, consisting of France, Finland, Italy, and the United Kingdom. Whereas in Group B, we see Germany, Denmark, Hungary, and Belgium. Group C consists of Poland, Spain, the Netherlands, and the Czech Republic. And last but not least, we've got Group D with Sweden, Russia, Ukraine, and Portugal. And boy, oh boy, are some of those groups stacked with just, you know, traditional esports countries. They really are. We we already know just so much about, for example, Sweden, Russia, Poland are the most obvious ones. But, Bakery, what are some of the others that we really should be keeping an eye out for in this tournament? I've definitely got my eye on Spain. So it's the mm. Duan brothers. It's Vortex oh. and Lucifer, established StarCraft 2 professional players, former Heroes of the Storm professional players as well. And they're in a group with the Netherlands, which are my other dark horse for the tournament. We've got two high-level Hero League players in Zavalos and Dark Ramacon. So we're going to see how that group goes, and it really, it could be anyone yeah. getting out of that. I mean, we've a lot of people have been talking about Group C as the potential group of Ooh, death. Oh, that's a hard one. there is a really big point that we need to bring up for Group B. Potentially the most, even though Group C is scary, just the amount of talent, Group B is potentially the least predictable out of who will make it out of that group. Yeah, I would definitely call Group B the wildest group of them all. And exactly about this Group B and Group A, we're going to you know, talk about a lot today because those two groups will be dealt with in the best of three matches we're going to show you later. What's really cool about the Nexus games as well is that you guys chose the map pool for the tournament before it even started. So some of the HCC maps that we're also familiar with haven't even made it. Very true. We're actually experiencing some what the first professional viewing of Volskaya Foundry, Volskaya Industries, the newest map to Heroes of the Storm. And we have some old favorites, right, Bakery? Yeah, Haunted Mines, which is a fan favorite map, uh, obviously quite highly contested, but yeah. it's back in the competitive scene for the first time since its rework. So it's yeah. going to be some real brawls on that one. All right, and those teams today will duke it out on even sad battlegrounds. First of all, we're going to kick things off with Finland versus Italy. Next in line, we've got Germany versus Belgium, followed by Denmark versus Hungary, and last but not least, the classic France versus United Kingdom. Now, since I'm being joined by two fellow Brits, what are your feelings towards your local team? Monumentally biased. <laughs> just, just so much. But I, I'm still going to look at it fairly objectively as we right. go. But you've got to feel just a little bit of comfort towards your own team, like Baker, I'm sure, would agree. But we're still going to look at it professionally, and I'm sure you would feel the same about Germany. I've heard some rumors about Germany that make me feel a little bit worried, but of course I will cheer for them nonetheless. And that's what you, sh you guys should be doing at home as well. No matter where you are in Europe, no matter where you live, root for your national team, spam Twitch chat with crazy emojis like you've never done before, <laughs> and uh, just make us feel good because this Nexus game tournament is such a unique thing. We haven't really had it in Heroes of a Storm history, at least in the esports department. So really cool, really excited to present you those matches. And I have to ask you those questions, guys. Which team is your personal favorite to maybe take the whole thing? Do you have any of those monumental favorites? Honestly, I'm going with Poland. 
So gotcha. Can not, you can you elaborate why? They're not the most recognizable names, but those are five fantastic Hero League players, and they're all on a team together. But the best part of all, you've got Mana, who is mm. one of the most successful Big name. Western StarCraft players of all time. As it turns out, he's a god at Heroes of the Storm as well, <laughs> so he's here. And considering the yeah. fact that he competed at Home Story Cup a few days ago, apparently he's still so good that he spends all that time in Hero League practicing all day long. It's pretty good, pretty good, uh, good play, right? Yeah, dual gaming, and this yeah. is one of the reasons I'm going for Poland as well. I like we said, Mana is just such a big name, but some of the other names. We have a couple names from Polska Pamienta, from that Open Division team, who was so close to making it into HTC. Yeah. Now they're going to be playing in this. It's hard to say no to those kind of statistics. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Spain, by the way. I think Vortex That's and Lud Lucifron, two of the uh, members of the original legendary Team Liquid Armada a few years ago, I think they're hungry yeah. and they really want to show that they still have what it takes to dominate tournaments. They were winning tournaments back in the day as Team Liquid before Baker was even a support player. <laughs> 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 Back when you were playing, what, what was the team? What were we? Team Kappa Pride? No, no, no I was on SK Gaming. SK Gaming. Yeah. Yes, it was. But yeah, you were still playing Falstead back in the day, and you were really quite good at it. And Valor. And Valor. Was, uh, uh, the two Valor heroes. Falstead, that was about it. You, played, you played a little bit of Tychus. <laughs> I remember you playing Tychus once or twice. I wasn't good at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Tychus is in a rough spot, but we want you guys to uh, out there to get involved as well. Make your voices be heard because you have an actual chance to let us know who you think is going to win each individual match here. Simply use the codes down below on the bottom of your screen. You can use ITWIN or FIWIN if you're cheering for Italy or Finland respectively. Of course, keep in mind that those votes will be open during the draft as well. So if you see your favorite hero come through or yeah. if you disagree with the draft heavily, then you can always change your opinion accordingly. Exactly. But for starters, this is an exciting game. Oh, yes. So we're really interested to see what you guys actually do think of this. <laughs> because we've been talking about this, even though it's, it's just our first match, a significant amount because yeah. we're not sure. Now, we don't want to influence our viewers too, too much. But if you had to maybe pick your own favorite, tell us a little bit more about uh, the teams Finland and Italy, respectively, Bakery. I'm personally rooting for Finland. I have a gotcha. lot of faith in Tix. So he's an Open Division player. He was on Bushido Esports along with Vortex and Lucifron mm -hmm. just this last Open Division. And he's an extremely skilled backline carry player. And I think if his team can provide him a stable platform and give him space, then he can really make the difference in this series. Tetra, what about you? I also have to lean on Tix quite a bit. He was legendary through both series of open division that we have had so far he's fallen short a couple times but there's nuts there's nothing really about the level of player that he is he is definitely capable of showing up yeah. for team Finland. and he said uh, in the que in the questions we asked them before uh, they were asked beforehand that he wants to become one of the first finnish players to make it into the top echelon and he's very capable of doing so. Definitely in a good way. I've got my own reasons to cheer for Finland too, because a little bird tweeted at me that Finland's player uh, Telwin is a Varian main. And you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm an Alliance fanboy by heart, and I can root against a team that feels Varian potentially into exactly. the draft. We can't count out Italy though. What can you tell us about Italy, Bakery? Because you would know more about this team than we would. Mm -hmm. So Italy's a really interesting team. So you look at them, and at first you might think, I don't recognize those players, but when you dig a bit deeper, you can actually realize that at least three of those are career Grandmaster players, very high-level Hero League players. And that causes me to put a lot of faith in them. I think they can actually make a deep run at this tournament. Yeah, where some of the other teams in this Nexus Games tournament uh, are a little bit spiky. You know, we have some familiar names, some, of, some newcomers. We can say that Italy could be that coherent unit where everyone is on the same page. Every player really tries to give it their best shot. So you would be a fool if you counted out Italy just like that. But ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready for the first best of three of the day between Italy and Finland. So let's take a look at which battlegrounds are going to get vetoed out and which battlegrounds are making it through. Of course, we're having some of those battlegrounds we mentioned before or Haunted Mines potentially, but oh, look at that. We've got two bands, Haunted Mines and Brexus Holdout, and the pick is going to be Cursed Hollow. It is indeed going to be Cursed Hollow, although the background behind us seems to say differently. But either way, Cursed Hollow, the go. one of the most standard of maps. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. The hype okay, is okay, okay. Volskaya. We're so. getting a little bit hyped. It looks like production wants to make it a little bit more exciting okay. for us as well. <laughs> Volskaya Foundry Bakery. This is the first time ever we see this battleground plate in professional play. 
It is, yeah. So the interesting thing about this is we don't know who picked the map yet, but if it was Italy, this makes mm -hmm. complete sense. We already mentioned how they were real Hero League warriors. Well, this is a Hero League map. Yeah, it hasn't cool. been in competitive before, so this is definitely going to be favoring Italy, but at the same time, Tix as well, also a Hero League grinder, so it really could go either way. What do you make of Volska Foundry Tetra? Any experiences you have made in the past, maybe in your own Hero League or quick match games? Just having played the map, it is a very interesting map. Area right. control is key because that Tree of Glove Protector can be exceptionally powerful if left unattended. Similar to back in the days of Garden of Terror, mm. but with a bit more potential for dive as it does have that lovely yeah. jump ability and the incredibly powerful laser. Good for pushing, good for fights. So it makes the fighting of that objective even more important. And you know what really excites me about uh, the Volska Foundry choice here? How pro teams are going to use the ability to hop in and off the protector. Because yeah. right now in most games, it's always one gunner, it's always one driver, one pilot. But I really think we have some room for really fancy plays, players hopping in and out when they're on low HP, for example. Absolutely, yeah. I think. That's something that this is the first time ever that yeah. can showcase that. These teams, they've had a bit of time to practice. As we were saying, they should be a cohesive unit by now. They can definitely show us some completely new stats in this map. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the draft is getting closer and it is the very first game of this European Nexus Games tournament. And I'm super excited. Who are we going to see here remains to be seen. Any heroes that are specifically well designed for Volskaya Foundry, maybe? So not specifically for Volsky Foundry, but for Team Finland and Kicks gotcha. in particular, I'm really looking at these hyper carries. I'm looking at Valor, I'm looking at Zuljin, and even some of the mages, like, for example, Gul'dan or Kromi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tetra, anything to add? Uh, no, that honestly seems covered. He's uh, in some of the matches we've watched beforehand that, of course, is open division play. Seeing him on those hyper carries, Valor, even Lee Ming right. at times. Give him his freedom and he will wreck your back line and your front line. Now, before this tournament started, we've had the chance to talk to a couple of players. And when we asked Team Italy's Moldavius about his favorite hero, he only had one word to say, Asmodan. <laughs> now, this so. is pretty important to keep in mind because the Nexus games don't yeah. play like your standard HEC play day. They don't play like your BlizzCon, like your East Western Clash. Here, we might see some pocket picks, some unexpected picks, right? Absolutely. So Azmodan is a hero that is fantastic in match made play mm -hmm. because it's much harder to deal with his split plus pressure and the overall global presence that he has. When these teams haven't had as much time to prepare and they're not as synergized as a professional team would be, Azmodan could be a great pick. They are, however, on comms, which is a big deal when it comes to dealing with heroes like yeah. the like the Asmodan, for example. So far, we have yet to see it pick up, but we're actually uh, Asmodan could have fit in because it's a very large map comparatively to some of the others. But so far, we're actually seeing one of the globals already being removed in the form of Brightwing, and yeah. immediately once that Brightwing is gone, we're seeing a bit of priority put onto the supports for both teams in the form of Tassadar as that second support, potentially empowering a hyper carry in the form of Tix. We will see. And we see Rhaegar ETC, one of the most bursty engage combos from Team Italy. I like the opening here from Italy. So picking the Rhaegar completely ensures the wave claim advantage, especially against the Tassadar. And wow, it's a yep, tracer. You're in. Okay, hyper carry time. All right. <laughs> and Arthas, one of the counters to it. So Tracer is, what, as you said, Tetra, one of those infamous hyper carries. What do you pick against that in order to shut her down most efficiently? Varian, who is a good Oh, <laughs> you got me all jingly. Uh, Greymane is also quite good. Any heroes with targeted burst can get good, even though you're going to miss cocktails. If Tracer drops low, if you can get that dive with potential, uh, yeah, if potential go for the throat, that goes get moved, but now he's gone. So the options are beginning to become limited. Valor, just a good hyper carry of their own. Yeah, Valor is solid hero, especially once he gets Gloom towards the later levels, he can quite effectively deal with Tracer. Yeah. Double support being locked in, I think it's definitely the correct choice. Rhaegar has a tough time dealing with Tracer by himself, especially up to level 13, um, where he does get Earth Shield. It gets a lot easier after that. Yeah, Mao's going to give him that early game support that he needs. Also, a fantastic follow up for ETC. Entangling Roots is going to be Beautiful. their early game win condition in terms of locking down that Arthur's or locking down that Tassadar. And if you take a look at the draft here so far from Team Finland, there's really a whole lot of abilities that can shut down a potential mosh pit play, which is always a Not big threat. Yet, no, they still need a main support for starters mm -hmm. to uh, continue to heal up the Tracer. The Tassadar can only do so much with those leeching shields. Uh, and with that, they can really be flexible with their last picks. Second tank, maybe another damage dealer. They let themselves pretty open for what to do. So 
they can pick someone with that heavy amount of crowd control to try and interrupt the ETC. Finland definitely have a few paths, and they do go for the Uther, so that's the safe path. That's the, let's not die, let's have Divine Shield as a backup in case someone gets caught, and Sonya as well, a very safe frontline tank, uh, very yeah. standard. So this is exactly what I wanted to see from Finland. Now, when there's a Sonya in the mix, automatically you want to ask yourself the same question, whereas if you were dealing with an ATC, how much CC do we have? How much interrupt do we have against the Sonya to stop her from spinning? Do you think Italy has... An <laughs> oh, there it, it happens! Is. It's, it's still in! <laughs> oh. So, Asman has a great pick on this map because the objective itself yeah. is not strong at pushing. We talked about earlier, how are they going to swap out? Well, if you have two people in there and Asmodan is by himself split pushing a lane, especially with Denmark Invasion, it's going to be a real disaster for Finland, let me tell you. Now, Bakery, are we going to see a laser build? How good is it? I'm not, I'm not sure what we're going to see. <laughs> yeah, really be so laser build is a fantastic solo lane mm -hmm. and it will actually beat Sonya, I believe. So that could be the path they go. At the same time, yep. it could just be playing much more safe, going for a standard Q build, trying to do a bit more on the objective itself. Right. So after watching the first draft of this tournament between Italy and Finland Tetra, who would you give sway to? Is there anything that really stands out to you? As much as I really love the Asmodan, it's an amazingly it's an amazing pick, especially thematically. But I've still got a lead in favor of Finland. We've actually got a couple comfort picks. Uh, Kiski Fish, if he is indeed the one mm -hmm. playing the Sonya, for example, he's already shown in some of the matches I watched earlier to be very solid on the hero. Uther is definitely a comfort pick, and just they've got to empower that Sonya and that Tracer, and they're going to have a wonderful time. Uh, Bakery, any last words before we dive into the game? I'm definitely looking at what Tix can do on that Tracer, and I'm definitely looking at what Asmodan can do in terms of wreaking havoc on that global game. Absolutely. And don't forget to still keep on cheering for your favorite teams, guys. If you're from Italy or if you're from Finland, make your voices be heard and, you know, just act really loud and twitch it. This is the only time <laughs> we, we will let you go uh, with it. We're not going to object. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive right into the action here on Volskaya Foundry. Team Italy versus Team Finland. Let's go right at it. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Volskaya Foundry. And spawning on the left-hand side in the blue trucks, we're going to have Rayquaza on Malfurion. We're going to have uh, Sesk playing on the Valor. Booya is playing on the ETC. Fatal Error on the Rhaegar. And it's going to be Moldavius on the Asmodan. That is Team Italy. And their opponents in red will be Team Finland, consisting of Klefter on that Arthas. We have MXD on Uther. Kiski Fish on Tassadar. We have Tix, very good player to keep an eye out for on the Tracer. And last but not least, Teldwin on Sonya. So, Teldwin and Kiski Fish, they do seem to swap around that tank role a fair amount. We've actually seen uh, in some of the scrims, we saw both of them playing tank. Kiski Fish did play the Sonya last time, mm -hmm. but it looks like in this case, he is going to be more comfortable off that role yep. and is going to leave that lovely Sonya over to his teammate for now. Little group up in the middle. Tetra, look at Asmodan's level one talent. We see an old old classic, a familiar talent that we haven't really seen in the latest uh, instances of the meta, but it is taste for blood. So this means, while well, we still have a pause here, hopefully nothing too, too serious, but we have taste for blood, and you know what that means? Stacking minions to the max. They have okay stacking potential. Yeah. They have the Malfurion Moonburn. They have the Lightning Bond from Rhaegar, both of which are very good at clearing. True. Valor is going to need to be careful. Multishot will help, but could potentially just wipe out all their minions. Yeah. Um, not sure how much the multi shot, the uh, hungry arrow is yeah. going to help in that scenario. And but they could do it. Yeah, even if the early game doesn't go too, too well for Team Italy, I think, especially after level 10, Asmodern will always have the possibility to really get those yeah. minion stacks and buy himself with Blackpool. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the technical difficulties here are soon to be over, and the game is going to continue very, very soon. Bear with us here. Everything's new, even for the players. They will have to settle in, yeah. but as we see here, the con action continues. So I will say I'm not potentially so keen on the taste of We'll keep an eye on it, see how well yep. the stacking goes on. If they can stack well, I'm down with it, but I can't help but feel that maybe the sieging uh, the sieging wrath might have been better, because you're going to have so many opportunities of the enemy yep. standing on the objective. And the thing is, if you go for that Taste for Blood Asmodan, your early game is going to be very weak. So you yeah. really need to make sure not to fall behind too, too late. You can always catch up in the late game if you get decent stacking going on. But if you fall behind by, let's say, two or three levels even, it's going to be extremely hard to make that comeback swing. Yes, it is. For now, Booyah rotating up to help Rhaegar, who was solo against three heroes. Now Such got pushed in pretty aggressively. Good shield from Kiskyfish there, keeping Tix nice and yeah. healthy. 
And I like what Tix is doing here. You can see he's using Tracer, who's an extremely mobile and very safe assassin to really dismount heroes from and prevent them from rotating to the maximum efficiency. That's something we can see in pro play a lot. Dismounting and basically hindering, crippling the enemy team's uh, rotations early on. Nice moves here by Klefter, playing exceptionally far forward, making it as hard as possible for the rotations for the Asmodan to be efficient. Because, yeah, Asmodan might still get all the stats mm -hmm. if they're able to just uh, weaken the minions well, well enough, but he's still in that lane for a yeah. significantly longer than he would like to be if he was able to stack it at the middle of the lane. And you see those moving platforms? Those are objectives uh, or yeah. parts of Volsky Foundry that Klefter. we're always going to have to take a look at. Oh, Good Klefter! Shield. Oh! That's what is coming through and gets. Uh, was that in the 1.5 uh, second time window? I think it was. He I may have gotten 10 stacks just like that. Lovely stacks for him there. Yeah. But that is going to be first blood. Really nice move there. Good poke damage from Bafurian as well. It actually was able to whittle him down there with a uh, solid stun by ETC yeah. to pick up the final blow. Now, for those of you guys who have never really seen competitive Heroes of a Storm played on Volskaya Foundry, pay attention to how teams will hold the capture platform. You can really use those small corner points to hide yourself from vision so you won't immediately get spotted by the enemy team. Like, buying time and really delaying the enemy team from capturing is of the essence here in this battleground. Looking at the moment at uh, the strategies of the two teams, it does look like Italy are all in on this Asmodan yes. strategy. They have completely abandoned the objective all the way up to 58% in favor of gaining more stacks. Look at this, they're not even attempting to move towards hmm. it. They are still looking for stacks. They're getting them pretty quickly, but this is a commitment. They need to have a solid defense against this Tree Glove Protector in order for this to get some value. Yeah, and you bring up a very good point here, Tetcher. The Tree Glove Protector isn't really that strong in the, you know, earliest stage of the game. So I like what Team Italy is doing. They're focusing more on making their own team composition strong rather than trying to go for an objective that's probably not really that worth it anyways. Well, it's already in and it's already up. Pushing in the mid lane here. They're doing a full five-man push, making the no most driver? of the fact. Yeah, it's just a mobile turret right now. <laughs> just firing the missiles. There we go. He's swapping between it. They have yeah. one person in that trigger oh, protection so cool. right now. Swapping between the two seats to get the maximum value out of it while everyone else can stay out and look for kills. And this is the idea. When you're against an Asmodan comp, heavy early aggression. And that was so smartly played by Tasser. Basically, he used all the abilities he had as a pilot, then he switched over to the gunner seed, used all the cooldowns and there, charge everything up again. and repeat. So that's really cool. You basically save a little bit of manpower because if you put two heroes in the triangle protector, you're using a lot of momentum, a lot of pushing power. Yeah, and it's working quite well for him right now. Look at him waiting it down. Now, finally put someone else in it because the Tree God Protector was unattended. Yeah. So they were able to get a little bit more pushing potential out of it. Now it's about to expire, so they have backed up. But beautiful micro with that objective-based <laughs> vehicle coming in from Finland to begin with. Their XP bar creeping ahead. But while all this is happening, Asmodan oh. has still like fatal error. No error this time. Able to survive. Good job here by Regar, keeping himself alive for now. And at some point, we're going to have to take a look at how many stacks Asmodan has been able to really accumulate up to this point. Normally, as a rule of thumb, I would say at level 10, having between 150 and 200 is decent. Let's have it. We will have a look once we hit level 10. Yeah, and exactly. See what we can see there. Task gets done. He does have dimensional shift, though. He's close enough to his towers that this should not be an issue. Kiski Fish, no problems here whatsoever. Using the dimensional shift to get out of harm's way. Ticks now taking a little bit of damage. Tassador is pretty far away, so he needs to be very careful with how aggressively he goes in. Good spear by Thelduin, though. Picking up the kill. Bomb onto Booyah. And Booyah is getting dropped so low. Task healing is just enough. And now Klefter may have overextended. Valor damage not enough thanks to the Root stopping the pursuit. Here we go. Very nice pickup here for Team Finland, who, according to many players or many people out there, were considered the favorites in this matchup. They do have, as you said before on the panel, players like Tix who played Open Division and who can really make a difference at any given moment. So far, I'm actually really enjoying as well the aggression of Thelduin. He is putting on mm -hmm. some hyper aggression in lots of situations in terms of zoning, and he was the big catalyst for that first kill in that last fight. So really enjoying this Sonya play so far. Keep in mind, though, that level 10 is going to be a pretty significant power spike for Team Italy. They're going to have access to potentially Mosh Pit. They're going to have Black Pool available, which allows Asmodan to stack a little bit more easily and also to deal, of course, a little bit more damage overall. Keep in mind that the longer the game goes, the more those Demon Generals can also empower lanes for split pushing attacks. Exactly. So you need to keep an eye on those lanes. See yep. if they are pushing up while there's no one in them if we do get some Generals of Hell <laughs> coming in from Moldavius. 
All right, he let's take a look at some of those uh, heroes of, uh, hero, heroic abilities on the side of Finland. We see the Vine Shield. Uh, no surprise here. We see yep. uh, Wrath of the Berserker and Army of the Dead, and of course Archon. Really good talent here coming in for Finland. Tracer looks like going for the thing, the standard talent, the singularity bomb, the percentage yep. damage. Yep. Not enough to kill off ETC. He was able to power slide away. Level ten is on the way for Italy. They are not as far behind as I'm sure Finland would like against this kind of Asmodan comp. And you know, there's a couple of juicy targets on the side of Italy for Tracer to get tons of value off her level ten. I mean, ETC pretty high. Health pool as well, and don't forget about his uh, oh, yeah. pretty big health numbers, too. So, a lot of value. And keep in mind that the two supports for Italy have very slow healing. If you burst the target down before Regar can land that Aspen's for healing, yeah. that's, a, that's a goner. We are now at level 10, so if we could see the stacks, that would be nice. Although, MXD getting rooted first. He is able to pull back straight. Throw the slap. Ten stacks, damage baby. to at least kill off an Uther. And like you said, extra 10 stacks there coming in. Ticks, Mike. Oh, the Mosh Pit. Mosh Pit. Ticks desperately trying to. Oh, do Italy. Asmodan is slamming everything. He is killing them off. It's just Ticks and Klepta. Absolute massacre by Italy with a nice and simple Wombo combo. Oh, they get another kill. And, and the, the Healing Pulse. Pulse. The Healing Pulse on the ground. Minions tagging the tower. They can easily pick this up. Italy snowballing out of control right now. And they're going to get the objective by the looks of it. You know what? The Italian football national team should have taken a look at how those <laughs> esports athletes perform here because they could make it to the World Cup. But guess what? Italy is coming into this Nexus game tournament swinging Tetra. Yes, they are. Italy coming in. And those stats, did you? We are on 200. 86 stack Woo. by the level 12 mark, which was just seconds Fantastic. ago, the level 10 mark, but they no. got so many kills, they boosted themselves very quickly. And we can also highlight the good mechanical execution here by Italy. None of their skill shots really seem to miss. Uh, Vala in particular with that sexy double arrow combo, like Seth's doing a really good job here, also snatching the healing pulse. That's a big deal on Volskaya Foundry. Those um, upgrades, you can plant down the turrets, for example, or even more importantly, the healing pulse. Those can really allow your team to dominate those shrine, uh, almost, excuse me, shrine uh, capture point controls. Seeing a counter push coming in yep. from Italy, even while Finland are attempting to gain some Boom. value. That's some good slam damage <laughs> on Kiski Fish. That is looking potentially yep. dangerous already. And down goes that fort. We will see Italy getting the bot fort as well. So they and Asmodan was stacking in the mid lane. Mm. They're just gaining so much value. Italy with the talent advantage, they still see no need to yep. fight. They might have been able to force something with that 13, but instead they're playing it a bit safer. Yeah, and once again, Italy doesn't really care about the map objective here. The Triglyph Protector is completely ignored by them. They're trying to get value elsewhere. We can Central see here value. the empowered minion wave <laughs> dealing heavy, heavy damage to that middle fort. The bottom one was destroyed already. And even though th that they have that 13 talent advantage, they're like, nope, we're just going to let our big boy Asmo farm, and we're going to come yes. back later. Patience till the late so game is the strategy here. And now we see Finland once again with that Triglyph Protector. What can they do with it? Can they gain more value this time? They've already taken yeah. down one fort. Their opponents very nearly killed the mid one. If they can get this, they will take a fort lead. They're on even talent. Yeah. Not the worst situation to be in. Even with that huge damage output oh. of Asmodan, they are still able to pick up objectives every now and again. And this is so cool to see. Tassador as the pilot using the body slam, oh, using the shield. Back. Tracer, hold a second Whoa, here. Gets that saved last slow. second by that mighty divine shield here. Ticks in trouble. The shield was used. She can now leech back up, but no. Oh, shields. Oh, oh, oh. hold a second here. Okay. Three got protection shield. Thank you very much. Ticks able to survive the yeah. slab there. That, that is scary. You can't even afford to mount up unless you know you are safe when you're within range of Asmodan. Another slab going to come in. It doesn't hit anyone this time, but it drops that fort down, and this fort shall drop. It's going to be two forts to two. I can almost sense uh, Kiski Fish's fingers here starting to sweat a little bit on that Tassler because <laughs> when you never know when Asmodan is going to drop that big basketball in onto the Tracer, so he's going to have to be very careful on how he uses the Plasma Shield in order to yeah. protect her. Right now, he's actually using the Plasma Shield on that fort, trying to keep mm -hmm. it alive, get as much value as possible. Kittik. Mosh Pit. Moshed. Where's the cleanse? Right now, just healing, dropping armor again and again, and Trace oh. stays alive. Valor is picked up in the back line. Thelduin doing a great job, Ticks. Finally. 
trying to dance around to pick up a number with a healing pulse. It's keeping his team alive, but it's a big focus on Rayquaza trying to focus him down. Tex doesn't get rooted, but Rayquaza is still able to escape. Yeah. The healing pulse was crucial here at keeping Malfurion alive. Without it, I fear the damage might have been too overwhelming on the side of Finland, but that's exactly the sort of comeback retaliation they needed. Blow up a target before the Ancestor healing was able to go through. That's exactly what we talked about earlier. And now all of a sudden, Finland caught that momentum. They're taking this healing pulse once again in the middle of the I should really pay attention not to lose it this time. <laughs> it's quite hard to make that <laughs> statement, though, when you're against an Asmo Dad, who at this point is well over 300 stacks, potentially 400 with the yeah. rate he has been going. Absolutely, and they're going to have to uh, rely on those slam dunks later on. Asmo Dan, that late game powerhouse, both teams now really even in terms of global XP count. 16 is just around the corner. Let's take a look at Asmo Dan here. I see a four tetcher. That's all I want to see. He's going to hit hard. <laughs> Once you get Ellipsis in your <laughs> Asmodad stats numbers, you know you're doing well with your stacking. So Asmodad, good job there in the 400s, approaching his final form as he continues to just get stacks yeah. and do damage. Italy just about to hit level 16. Finland, though, holding it together. They, that fort is still alive, I would like to mention. It did yep. survive in the end. But Finland holding in it. It's, it's five kills to two in favor of Italy. But this is way beyond the point where we can count Finland out yet. Yeah, we can also see a turret upgrade here on Tassadar, on Kiski Fish. So uh, Team Finland, they're going to have an abundance of additional tools to really secure the next protector phase. Looks like they're thinking about trying to push into the camp, but they decide hmm. against it. Uh, instead, we're going to see Italy moving back yeah. in that direction again. Someone is running a tricked banner in this game. That is lovely to see. A little bit of respect <laughs> there for the team, and they're going to Wait for the objective. They're trying to bait them in. Yeah, that's very smart. So they're they're waiting for uh, the mercenaries to be unleashed until the next platform will spawn. Uh, so they yes. will have additional map pressure on the top lane, and the enemy team may have to send someone in order to deal with it. And let's face it, wave clear is not really one of the core strengths that Team Finland has in this draft. If they want to send Tassadar, then well, guess what? Trace is not going to have her best buddy to protect her. They send Sonya. They lose one of their highest exactly. damage numbers. No global heroes. So yeah, they have to be very careful with that. Asmodan continuing to push up the top lane as well. He actually slammed another minion wave while he was before he rotated. And now, slowly but surely, oh, teams amazing. should really start to value and respect the Trick Left Protector. After level 16, after almost 14 minutes into the game, this bad boy is going to hit hard. Look at Tracer actively dodging that basketball. Very well done. You cannot afford to really take those shots for free. Yeah, and speaking of free, right now, it, it, this is potentially a completely free uh, trigger off yeah. for Italy. Sure. Our place for Italy is the one who is up, the one who was sent up to D push the main oh. tank. And wow, Tix what are they going to do? Wrecked by the damage of Valor yeah. there. They need Arthur's just to have any chance stacking. Looks like they're going to be the ones to abandon the objective this time. And Tetcher, what if you send your main tank solo laning, who also has the healing pulse upgrade available? You're not going to be yeah. able to do a whole lot. You cannot initiate. You do not have the AOE healing that's so much needed against all that poke, as you said, yeah. from Vala with the arrows awesome. and from Asmodan right. with those hard hitting balls. Right. This is their chance. Arthur's is on the way. Everyone is at full health, pretty much full mana. They're only 50% in, and we can yeah. see here that Italy, mm -hmm. as opposed to getting blown up and detonated <laughs> by this engage, have backed up, and they're going to be ones to try and poke down. Veldwin gets slowed by that Earthgrass totem. He's getting engaged upon straight. It's good. So much CC on Veldwin, but he's like, oh, immediate Twilight Dream destroys him. Tracer coming in to try and get the counter kill, but then a good ice ball by Rayquaza keeps him alive. Ticks is trying everything he can. Good start, Divine Shield to keep Ticks alive. Both teams fighting for everything. Hey, Lero. But Lero finally taken out, but down it goes the Arthurs too. And is dunked. Down he goes. And now it is task dropping too. Ticks the only survivor. And that was a long fight. And it looked like a moment of freedom for Villain. But the second that one hero was low, slam dunk. Asmodan picks up another kill. I can't believe how well Italy is playing this game so far. We saw picture perfect execution on that team fight. ETC was zoning out the Uther. He was yep. knocking him back, stunning him. And that was enough time for Sonya to get exploded on. Especially Malfurion here was my MVP. The oh, silence, so and then how he dodged the Tracer ulti with the Ice Block. He did everything correctly. Rayquaza, you oh, are winning yeah. a Mamma Mia. Friend. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> Mamma Mia, Italy getting another Trigon Protector as they rotate down to bot lane. They've already opened up that wall. 
and killed off the keep here. So they yep. are in a great position to, Fantastic. if they wanted to, just soak for 20 and yep. maybe just go for core with the Protector if they wanted to. And that's the cool thing about this objective here on Volskaya Foundry as well. You can really take your sweet time in order to determine when you want to continue the channeling process and when you want to yeah. pause it. Because as you said, level 20 is around the corner here for Italy, so they would be foolish to waste any of the duration of the Trick Life yeah, Protector when they can't wait for the Storm Talent. All right, Tix holds it on 99 yep, overtime. overtime. And now it they need to go now. Yep. We are seeing Finland. They're going to keep control of this. Mm -hmm. So the safe move here, for if Italy were to get it, would be to go top lane or mid lane, to just get us level keeper yep. or a But the safest move is to just wait. They can afford to give it up if they need to. They don't want to, but they can just do the exact same thing they did last time. Marsh is up in seven seconds. Exactly. They that's can afford to be patient. Yeah, that's why they were waiting for a little bit longer here. They want to have all those heroic abilities ready. Tass are taking huge amounts of damage here yeah. before the real fight's even Tick. starting here. Tass, is not, Tass couldn't get to Tix because yeah. the, the, the platform later there. Being a huge pain, Klefta gets slammed. Power slide, completely zoning out Klefta. Kiski Fish is so out of position, drops the, the mark here. The Moshpit <laughs> on the travel lane, picks up Arthur's. It gets Sonya for a second as well, but two heroes just get removed. Tix is out of the fight, he's had to retreat completely. MXD is trying to get to Sonya, but she's too far away. Tix is too low to continue. That's the Trigger Protector, and Uther will get picked oh. up as well. Tix doesn't get slapped. They're just gonna let Uther go, yeah. and they're gonna go for the core. This looks like it will be GG, Kendrick. Yeah, this is going to be a very tough defense here for Finland. Only two members left alive. 35 seconds on Sonya, 28 on Arthas, and 28 on Tassar. This is not impossible to hold here. The trick left protector. We're going to see how powerful it is. Look at oh, this. Oh, also hell. raining from the skies on the core here. And Booyah is going on the Tracer, dropping her so low. MXD doing everything he can to keep Tracer alive. The last dish defense. But with 10 seconds till the next hero up, it's not enough. And that is going to be GG as Italy takes game number one. Wow, what a performance here by the quote-unquote underdog team in this Group A battle. Finland considered to be such a strong team with players like Tix, you said it before, who have a lot of competitive experience. But now, all of a sudden, it is Italy who's in the driver's seat quite literally here because they put on quite the show on Volskaya Foundry Bakery. Yeah, it was yeah. all Italy. The, the patient stacks, this is the point. This is something that we've seen so many times in different tournaments. Italy waited, and they weren't punished for that. They got stacks. When you're against an Asmodan comp, you can't just <laughs> let it stack. They tried to push. They got, like, a fort. That's not enough value that you could be getting when you're against an Asmodan comp. So... It was a nice idea going doing that into a tracer comp, which suffers with that pushing potential. Yeah. And there were so many good moves by Italy as a team as a whole. We saw great Malfurion play, always on point with those ice blocks, good silences, especially when a target like Sonya was isolated. We saw beautiful performances by Regar as well. Answer souls were mostly on point. And I think this really coher coherent performance as a team made them win the first game. You really had the feeling that this is a unit. This is a team that plays on the same... Uh, same wave. Absolutely. They took their players' strengths and they very much ran to them. A little bit of little bit of Hero League mixed with some really <laughs> nice coercion there uh, coming in from Team Italy. Really, I'm a fan. I'm excited to see what they bring up next. Absolutely. So we spoke about before the game how Italy was a cohesive unit. They were all on the same page and that definitely showed the Asmodan pick, which we thought at first might have been a bit ambitious. Definitely. Um, it showed what it can do. Yeah, and Bakery, why don't you talk us through some of those highlights here for game number one, maybe even featuring that Asmodan? Yeah, so we've actually got a very hype Asmodan moment for our first replay here. So this is the first blood, and you can see the dunk come through. That is within 1.5 seconds. Nice. This is a huge moment. It gives him the whole 10 stacks, as we roll it forward to here. This is a replay I really love to see what Finland did. So they start pushing. The Trike Left Protector comes in. Tassadar then swaps from the pilot seat to the gunner seat. And then he starts pushing alone in the Triglav in the gunner seat with no pilot. So as we roll it forward, we can see they end up getting the entire wall. And they don't even miss XP because they have Sonya already going bot to catch the wave. And they still have effectively five heroes here. Yeah, really cool to see the cooldown management, if you will, on the Triglav Protector. Hopping in from, to, uh, from pilot to gunner. Very cool to see. So this replay is... 
Finland, with that Triglav push, gained control of the early game. And it was going really well for them. They had a full level lead. Um, Italy didn't have 10 until very recently before this clip. But as we see here, Italy hit 10 and they capitalized on the Uther being out of position. So we roll it forward. We see Uther is out of position. Now it looks like he's about to escape. He still has Divine Shield. But out of nowhere, the dunk from Asmodan takes him down. Now, Finland want to stay. They have the Uther Ghost, and they say, we can get more. Let's keep fighting. But Buya, he has other ideas. He slides in with the mask. It's a three-man uh, mask. It's only Tracer. Oh, the oh, man. And the Twilight Dream <laughs> completely cleans them up. Yeah, beautiful. And we had a couple of those slam dunk moments where Aspen was even the one who finished off the target to get another 10 juicy stacks. It was just beautiful to see him snowball out of control. So as we saw this pick here, they tried to go on Tracer. They didn't quite get the pick. and. Uh, Sonia especially fells you in uh, from Team Finland managed to turn it around, get the pick back on Valor, and this brought Finland back in the game. But it went Italy's way from then on, and here we see the final fight. So it starts off. Now, Finland, it's very important to note they have no keep in the bottom lane. So this 20 versus 18 should be a core if Finland cannot win this fight. So they decide we have to force it. Let's go. We look as it goes forward. We see Arthas already starts the fight in not too great a position, only 60% health. That's for other clip. And Tix as well on the Tracer, again, not doing great. So this is not a situation that they want to have, but they feel we have to do something. So the Mosh, fantastic tour bus, initially gets Arthas. Tassadar actually ends up going down, uh, I think to the blink silence there. Arthas caught in the Mosh the whole time. The Sonya stuck below. And yeah, that was there GG. Was, there was actually a really nice moment of that tour bus catching Arthas and then on the Travelator. <laughs> yeah. so it, it caught Sonya just on the edge and Uther had to drop Divine Shield on that as opposed to on Tassadar who was dying down below. I really do feel that there is a little bit of a positioning issues potentially from Tassadar and maybe Uther where Tracer is getting left alone and Tassadar is being further forward than the person he's trying to protect. See, that, that's the issue we have. So, Tassadar as a hero in a very high level game, you want to be another space creator. That's what makes him yes. better than other second But you supports. should not be behind the enemy's backline. That, yeah, that's the <laughs> issue <interesting laughs> thing, is there's a disconnect in Team Finland. They haven't had enough time to flesh everything out by the looks of things. And as we said in the draft, they rely on, a lot on the Ticks hard carry. They need to be a lot cleaner in supporting him and making space for Ticks. By the same token, though, I think it's very admirable that Italy executed a team comp that was not easy to execute. The mosh pits in professional play or yeah. in more competitive play, always a risk. And then, of course, going for the Taste for Blood Asmodan, which takes so long to get rolling. Big kudos to them. Yeah, definitely a, a risky move, and it paid off. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, we're going to... Got go right into this second draft that's around the corner. But in the meantime, don't forget to spam your it win or fi win if you're cheering for Italy or Finland, respectively. And especially after that strong showing in Gamer 1, I think Italy is going to have gained a lot more yeah, support and a lot more yeah. That's yeah. going to be good. And I'm very interested to see what the next map is going mm -hmm. to be because you don't want to take them to another Asma map. You could just ban it, but you don't want to. You might as well just take them to a map where it's less viable. See, most of the time, when I'm in this position as a player, I feel like the optimal thing to do is to say, okay, the Asmodan wasn't actually that good. Here's where we made our mistakes, and that's how they allowed that's how we allowed them to be successful with that pick. But in this case, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, he says it's his favorite hero. Yeah. They clearly they're... Yeah. very well executed the Asma comp. There were little flaws, if any, outside of the early game. So I'm definitely looking at that and thinking, maybe that should be a second ban on the Asmodan. Yeah, I agree. And especially here in such an, I would call it, less professional atmosphere. You can't compare it to the highest level, the highest echelons of competitive play. Players can be target banned a lot more easily because their player or their hero pool, excuse me, may not be as high as you would expect from a true professional. So what do you think potentially either of the teams would need to change to either uh, if Italy to stay on top or Finland to potentially come back? Like you said, maybe the Asmodan ban, but what else could be done? I think Finland picked a comp that was hard to execute. It's not easy to run Task Tracer at a high level, especially yep. when you pick it so early that the enemy team yeah. can draft around it. So I'd like to see them resort to an easier comp, but again, the same style. We saw how it worked from the early game. We saw some of the mid games where they had these fantastic turnarounds. Stick to the same style, clean it up a bit, play something a bit more comfortable. 
And we're about to enter a comfort zone for most teams here because we're going to see a very popular battleground. We're going to see Infernal Shrines being picked as the next map. Okay. And I think there's no more excuses here, really, for Finland to maybe just blame it on the map. You know, Volskaya Foundry is a little bit wonky, but we weren't really sure how to play there. No, this is a battleground that has been in the competitive scene for a long time. So standard strategy may help them out to just outclass Italy. Worst asthma down map. <laughs> <laughs> it's doable. You can definitely do it on here if you rotate between just two of the lanes. Yeah. So we will see if Finland is able to react to that. But we also see a couple other heroes who can gain huge priority on this map that we might not have seen on uh, on Volskaya. For example, Abatha could jump up a little bit in priority just due to soaking potential. Uh, more AoE here. Sonya's going to stay way up in terms of priority. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And then there's, of course, Infernal Shrine's pockets pick.